Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything with Mariano and Pauline. Hashtag Pauliano. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple. It's simple, such a sad song. The one that, the one that we rely on. To get us, to get us. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mariano. Pauline's not here this episode, but she will be back very soon. We had a little accident. Last time we were together, we were talking about really good old commercials and toys that, you know, were around when we were growing up. And we came across sock and boppers, and I wanted to buy some and play with them. So we, you know, we ordered some online. Uh, we got into it, and long story short, she's right now at the hospital having her head surgically reattached to her body. She'll be fine, probably. Anyway, let's get into it. Now, one thing that I found totally sad was. After the Orlando shooting, when they were doing the funeral services for some of the people who, you know, were slain, there were some Baptists that had a problem with the funeral because the people who were killed were gay, or at least at a gay club. But I thought it was really cool how some people wore these really big, uh, like, angel costumes with really big wings on them to kind of drown out and protect the people from the naysayers that were across the street from what I saw in the pictures and videos, along with a big amount of support. Not for the Baptists, for the other team. Now, they were singing Amazing Grace. They were kind of chanting in order to drown out the other people's, you know, slurs. And it was it was really nice to kind of see people come together like that. It was something that, um, you know, you almost don't expect too much these days. But it, it was really powerful. And I just wanted to acknowledge that. Second haters. Anyway, another thing. Cristiano Ronaldo had a little altercation with a newscaster who had approached him to ask him a question. They were, you know, standing alongside a lake and he grabbed the guy's microphone, throws it into the lake and continues walking. I thought that that was, I don't know, I, I kind of have mixed feelings about that one. It seems a little harsh, a little unnecessary, but at the same time, it must be annoying having people walk right up to your personal space, put the microphone all in your bubble and ask you some kind of questions about, you know, something that you've been asked a million times before. So I'm not sure really how to feel about that one. I know that a lot of people didn't like it, but uh, I guess we'll see how that one goes. I'm sure he'll either issue a Twitter apology or he won't. That seems to be the way that celebrities like to apologize these days. But um, I've got another thing for you. Now, I came across this website that had a quiz that said that we can figure out the exact age that you are based on what alcohol you like to drink. Now, it was wrong for me. It was uh, five years off, but you know it was still pretty funny, and I want to go through that a little later on. I also want to talk about some celebrities who don't use social media like at all. I thought that that was surprising. I thought social media was kind of a big thing for celebrities because the public eye is you know is a good majority at least of you know what they're known for and what it is that they've kind of mastered in terms of keeping the uh, the private things private and putting a very good foot forward publicly. And I know it must be difficult. I know that they, you know, they often employ people to do this for them. I just find it interesting because I know that I can look at, you know, mine or any one of my friends kind of Instagram posts and, and then compare it to real life. And there's a lot of like lulls in real life. And Instagram is just interesting thing after interesting thing. And it, it's just uh, the social media kind of lifestyle has has really just changed expectation for what people consider to be a fun day. If only I was better at, you know, keeping track of my social media accounts, I would have the funniest posts because I do some stupid things sometimes. For example, I bet you guys didn't know that I once hitchhiked, hitchhiked excuse me, from Fresno to about uh, downtown LA. And there's a story behind this. You see, I was going to see a very pretty girl about a dog that she wanted. I'm a dog trainer. That's, you know, one of the many talents I have. She's a dog trainer. That's one of the many talents she has. Now, she found this dog that she really wanted from TJ, Tijuana, and she doesn't speak Spanish at all. So she asked me if I could call the owner of the dog, talk to him, set up kind of a meeting, a price and everything, and we'd buy it. So I was going to take a train down to LA and I missed it by seconds. I saw it leaving the train station as I was arriving and I was like, man, is that the train? And it was the last train of the night, like at 1030 at night. And so I I kind of went along the road in my sister's van. I was sticking like the majority of my body out of the window because trucks are really tall. And I was trying to talk to them to see if I could get a ride. They couldn't hear me because the wind is really strong, even at, you know, 55, which is what they drive at. So I was trying to like use hand signals to 
to show if I ride with you, I can, you know, buy you dinner or, you know, give you gas money or something. And they all said no. So I stopped at a gas station. They all said no. And then I stopped at another gas station and one of them said yes, but he was only going to take me about halfway because then he was going to stop at a truck stop. And I told him, you know what? That's fine. It's a truck stop. I'll find someone else and I'll continue from there. And he said, okay. So that's where my sister left me. She took off back home and I rode with this guy who, you know, turned out to be really nice. We jump on the road. He only speaks Spanish, which I thought was really nice because I was going to Mexico. So I had a chance to brush up. We turn out, you know, just driving all the way and we get to downtown LA at this food for less on Olympic and it was 241 in the morning. And I, he drops me off there. I wait. He goes and parks to sleep, you know, wherever it is that they do. And I'm sitting there for a good, I don't know, 15 minutes. And my friend picks me up there in the parking lot. She was super impressed, of course, that I hitchhiked and it was a lot of fun. From there, we drive down to TJ, uh, stay at a, a Days Inn, which was kind of fun. They have this really cool thing in the morning where you, you know, you make waffles and it like flips and it's kind of cool. Now, we go pick the dog up. We head back home. That was an interesting story. And, it was just so much fun. I wish I had kind of chronicled it better. I did a little bit, but I didn't know how far to push it. I didn't want to annoy the truck driver taking, you know, pictures and videos. Um, I, I didn't want to like lose my ride somewhere in the middle of nowhere and it was late at night. Uh, you know, plus I really wanted to see my friend. Another thing, you know, I'm, I've talked about this one last time too, but I've slept in a dog park the first few times I came up here because I didn't have a place to stay. I don't know anybody in this area. I rode the train up here. I rode my bike uh, to the building here, which is about 11 miles away from the train station. But I stopped about four miles short at this really cool dog park because I figured it was a nice place to sleep. Now, the problem with that is if you're going to sleep outside somewhere, number one, um, at least try to pick somewhere private. You don't want to really be bothered. Number two, it is a lot colder at 4 a.m. than it is at like 12, you know, midnight. So expect that. I thought, okay, I mean, it's not that bad out tonight. I'll be fine. No, a few hours later, I was freezing. I went to the kitty section of the park and I kind of burrowed myself into like the wood chips that are hanging around the slides and everything. And I was, you know, cuddling my bag that had my, my change of clothes in it and stuff for, you know, sweet dear life. And it was not fun. Oh, and I got bit by a ton of bugs. Not fun. So be careful with that. Take a blanket with you or just don't do it. Just get a hotel. Really, that's the way to go. Now, one thing that I thought that was kind of funny, I guess, was Ronaldo, the soccer player from Portugal. He he threw a news you know, reporter's microphone into a lake. They were walking along some lake, and this guy walks right up to him and asks him a question, and he just grabs the microphone and throws it. And you can hear the sound of the whoosh because it's you know, a microphone, and I thought that that was kind of funny. But at the same time, it's really rude, but... I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this one because I know that people don't like him because I guess he does things like this all the time. But at the same time, I could see where it could be a little annoying where, you know, people are in your face all the time asking you questions and he's a soccer player. You know, it's not like I know he's famous, but he's he's an athlete. I, I guess it could be pretty annoying. Now, another thing that I saw speaking of athletes in the news was LeBron. He's you know, now his third championship, third MVP, he did a great job with the NBA finals. Um, some people had a problem with his speech when he got back to Cleveland. He was cussing a little bit. It wasn't, I mean, super vulgar. It was really good. He was talking about his teammates, how it must have felt to bring a trophy back home to Ohio. It had been a long time since Cleveland had had any kind of notoriety in that sense. And for him to be from Ohio, that must have been something special. And I'm really happy for him. But I know a lot of people were kind of down on him for, you know, cussing because they said that, you know, he's in the public eye. He should he should think smarter than that. And I guess I can see where they're coming from. But at the same time, you know, it's it's his time. So just let, let him do what he wants. As long as he's not, you know, getting a little too crazy, then no big deal, I guess. Now, let's jump right into the 2016 VidCon. I was watching some videos and it looks like a lot of fun. I had no idea. I think I'm going to go next year. Uh, a lot of these people, I don't really know too much. Some I recognized and they're doing a really good job. A lot of really good singers on YouTube. I was surprised for that. Man, VidCon looks like a ton of fun. Definitely check it out on Twitter. That's where a lot of the posts have been that I've seen. Definitely look it up there. Totally worth the watch. Another big thing on social media has been gun control. Ever since all these things have been going on, gun control has been all over Facebook. I've seen it everywhere. People arguing. I've seen thousands and thousands of comments. And then Facebook does that weird thing where people comment on your comment. Then you kind of kind of you got to go in there like a fourth dimension. And people go at it. It's It's been crazy. But I understand, you know, it's heated and people have these different emotions mixed into it and these different views on it. Um, I myself 
I'm not really for gun control because I feel like it's if they do that, it's going to be a law, and only people who follow the laws are going to give up their guns. And the people who don't, which are the people you need to watch out for anyway, are the people who are going to keep their guns, and then everybody else is not going to have any guns. And I just think that that's a bad situation. So I'd rather there not be too much strict gun control. I'm all for making it a little more difficult to buy them. I mean, I get that's fair, but I don't know how I feel about taking them all away. That kind of leaves us a little open and vulnerable. Now, I've got a few other things I want to bring up, but first, I need to go to a quick commercial break, so I will talk to you soon. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. And I'm back. Thanks for listening. Now, there are a few celebrities who I just saw don't use social media at all. Number one of which, Daniel Radcliffe. That was a little surprising. I guess because he's young and, uh, you know, he's been in the spotlight for a long time and he kind of grew up. He's one of those like childhood actors that grew up in fame. So I thought that he would have really taken to social media and these things quite well. But I guess not. I guess he says he doesn't have the time for it. He thinks that it, you know, can kind of take over your life and he just he doesn't like to use it. Brad Pitt and Angelina or Brangelina, much like Pollyano, but, you know, we're cooler. Let's be honest. Now, they say that they don't use it at all. Facebook, Twitter, other social media sites. The couple, they say that they monitor even their children and what they post because, you know, it must be scary out there. Especially when you're a celebrity of that caliber. I know that there are some people that really take that too far and they can stalk you to an unhealthy extent for, you know, them and and the person being stalked. Now, Jake Gyllenhaal is another one. George Clooney is another one. These guys don't use social media for the same reason as Daniel Radcliffe. They don't believe in kind of having their lives overtaken by it. And Jennifer Lawrence, she's my favorite in this list just because I love Jennifer Lawrence. She doesn't use it because she says that she's really bad with technology. Well, you know, just hang out with me and I'll teach you. Duh. Um, But she also says that she gets slammed so much on social media that she'd rather just kind of stay off the internet as much as she can, which that one I understand. People are kind of mean to her, but I guess she's a really great actress. You know, they must need something to talk about. Sandra Bullock is another one. She's an Oscar winning actress and she doesn't like to use social media because people are mean. And she's saying that there are false projections, you know, being put up all over the internet and she hates taking selfies because they end up on the internet and then people do their whole Photoshop thing. And next thing you know, she's like standing on top of a tower in Dubai, you know, naked with handcuffs on. People pe- people do the craziest things. Um, now, another thing I wanted to bring up because I thought that it was really funny was this quiz that I came across that says, we know your exact age based on what alcohol you drink. And I took the quiz. It was wrong. Uh, it was like four years off. I'm 23. It called me at 27. But some of the questions were really funny. So I wanted to go over them here. You can find this at BuzzFeed.com. It's really funny. Definitely check it out with some friends, you know, or alone if you're a loner like me. Now, this is question number one. What's your preferred alcoholic drink? There's beer, wine, hard liquor, cocktails, or anything that tastes like candy. Uh, I chose hard liquor. The next question was, if you had to drink beer, what kind of beer would you drink? Lager, Pilsner, Pale Ale, uh, Porter, Bitter, Stout, or I don't know the difference or excuse me, the different kinds of beer. That's what I chose because I don't. If you had to drink wine, what kind of wine would you drink? Red, white, or rosé? I chose white because red makes my teeth all red. And uh, rosé is pretty good, but I, I like white wine. If you had to drink red wine, what kind of red wine would you drink? Merlot, Shiraz, Cabernet Sauvignon, Malbec, I hope I'm saying that right, Pinot Noir, Zinfandel, or I don't know, red? Um, I chose that one because I don't know either. If you had to drink white wine, what white wine would you drink? Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio. Um, wine is wine. Gimme. That's an option. I chose Chardonnay. Do you prefer a dry wine or a sweet wine? There's dry, sweet, or just pour the glass and get out of my face. That's what I chose because just pouring it out of my face. If you had to drink liquor, which liquor would you drink? Bourbon, gin, cognac, rum, rye, vodka, scotch, tequila, 
or absinthe? Yeah, I think I'll stick with the tequila. Which would you prefer, to drink it straight up or on the rocks? I chose straight up. If you had to mix your liquor with something, what would you mix with? And it's as if you had to because I normally just don't. There's lemon lime soda, there's Coca-Cola, ginger ale, club soda, orange juice, lemonade. I chose uh, club soda. And then it said, I'm 27 years old. I drink like someone in their 20s. I no longer need to disguise the taste of alcohol, but I still love a good night of drinking, which is good because my hangovers haven't gotten too bad yet. Enjoy. Thanks. That's kind of mean. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Definitely check it out. It's on BuzzFeed and it's really funny, but it was wrong. Or maybe I'm just old. That's possible. That sucks. And what else sucks is in Miami, in Miami Beach, in fact, there was these people that they were caught on camera at this convenience store. They have this this credit card scammer, which for those of you who don't know, it snatches your credit card information when you swipe your card through the normal like you know payment method thing at a convenience store. And the crazy part about it is just how easy this is. I feel like people don't realize how easy it is for someone to steal your info. If you've seen the movie Focus, check it out. And I feel like that's not even an exaggeration. Um, these guys, what they did was, I don't know if they asked him to go grab something because he moves out of frame. And then these two guys, just while he's gone, it's like I don't know, 15 seconds that he's gone. They just attach it really quick. They put it onto the little, um, the little device, you know, where you slide the card and then type in your numbers. And that's it. Then they just go away like nothing happened. And then, you know, people throughout the day are just going to use it and give them all their credit card info. It's crazy. Another thing that I found interesting was there was this girl. I guess she's really well known, you know, on the Internet for doing like makeup tutorials. In fact, she was so good at it that she did her makeup. And it, I guess it turned out really nice while she was giving birth birth go figure that one i guess you thought that that'd be interesting which i'll admit i watched it hey and you know it's just crazy some of these people are really skilled it's i love social media because it brings out the funniest things in people but i always believe that everyone's good at something it's just a matter of finding out what that is and then just putting it on display but that's a good one speaking of good ones of course game of thrones is still trending people are still going insane for game of thrones throners they call them these guys they're always posting you know what i've never seen game of thrones i think i need to check it out because apparently it's really really good and i'm missing out so i'll definitely do that probably tonight on my way back home finding dory was another big one i noticed that i'm seeing a lot of these memes all over social media they kind of come in trends like after finding dory came out all the posts about uh like the old finding nemo pictures came out you know people do their funny memes with it i like this one that it seemed like a, a news report and it was you know shark spotted with a giant grin on its face and i was like what and i click on the picture and it's bruce from finding nemo i thought that that was cute that was funny speaking of facebook though one thing about facebook right now is it's taking a lot of heat there's two big stories that i saw about it number one people are really angry at the fact that facebook has this they call it political bias training or like unbiased training um i don't even know what that is because i'm afraid of like being brainwashed but another thing about it was i guess facebook twitter instagram they all have these pages you know of what's trending and they say that people kind of inflate that or post things that aren't really trending like there's a way to get into that and put extra stories on there and facebook has been taking a lot of heat from like the huffington post and these other big companies like the guardian and they've all been saying that it's it's illegitimate and facebook has been you know kind of coming back at them saying no you're using an outdated version that that's not something that we can do but um i'm not sure some of these posts seem a little unbelievable so i think i might be you know with the other guy's side i think facebook might be changing stories up just a little bit but there are also those conspiracy theorists if you go through the comments and things that say that they're doing it just to kind of cover up what, you know, the problems with America and all that stuff. Pretty much what they said about like, you know, Michael Jackson and um, other just big stories of the time. You know, things are happening. People need to be aware. But an alarming, in fact, excuse me, a record high number of people rely on social media only for their news stories. I think that that's crazy. You know, people need to be more informed, take a better approach. I love social media, obviously, but there are other things out there. There are more legitimate things out there. Like Wikipedia is another thing. I think that that's crazy because anybody can post or anybody can edit the posts there. So you have to be careful. Not everything that you read is correct. In fact, I understand that most of it tends to be incorrect. I know that people need their entertainment and their stories and things to kind of get them through a long day at work. But don't lose sight of what's really true. A lot of it's just fluff and a lot of it actually matters. So be able to distinguish the two. It will help you out in the future, especially during times like this with the elections and everything that's been going on. And I noticed people just kind of ride the wagon of other people. That's why I call social media a wave. I remember, you know, back when Donald Trump was first saying uh, he made a comment about Mexicans. I remember when that happened. And I remember that 
I would talk to people, and they they would say that they didn't like him, and I would ask why, and they would they would post. I'm sorry, they wouldn't post. Excuse me. They would tell me, you know, things that aren't what he said. He said one thing, and they would tell me another thing, and I'm like, well, where did you hear that? And they're like, oh, well, I saw it on Facebook. I'm like, oh, okay, then it must be true. No, stick to what you actually know. Find out for yourself. I'm always a big proponent of finding things out for yourself. Social media is great, but before you ride the wave, make sure you find out what caused the current. Now, before we wrap up, I do need to take one more commercial break. I will talk to you soon. Thanks for listening. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And I'm back. Thanks for listening, everyone. Now, I'm sure you remember a couple weeks back, we did the hashtag five words that would make you mad or make me mad in five words. And there have been a few kind of spinoffs of that. And one of them that I thought was really funny was it's uh, hashtag five words to ruin a date. And some of these are really funny. They range from you shouldn't feel that way. Uh, lots of calories in that. I like that one. And then one of my favorites was my fedora collection is vast. That's I don't know if that's like a deal breaker, but I guess it could be a little funny. My ex-girlfriend is crazy. I hate that one. I hate when people talk about their exes. That's a big thing for me. Uh, I see one that says I don't really get Beyonce. Uh, don't tell Pauline because she'll you know she'll be in jail for murder after her head's reattached. Of course, uh, are they real? Can I touch? <laughs> that's funny. But that's six words. Yeah, well, lighten up. It's a joke. Um, I guess so. Why feminist instead of humanist? Grr. Um, women don't appreciate nice guys. Uh, I guess you should never say that really ever. Healthy appetite for a chick. That's kind of, yeah. Some of these are really bad. It's really funny. Check these out. I found these on HuffPost and it's something that's really funny. But another kind of spinoff of this was five words to ruin a job interview. Aha. So listen up if you're planning on, you know, a career change or a career start, depending on if you're 13 or not. No, no, sorry, 13. Wait, more like 16, 17. Yeah, stay in school. Anyway, five words to ruin a job interview. What's the Wi-Fi password? Question mark. I did ask that one actually, but not in my interview. I asked it like my second or third day, and I still don't have it. By the way, uh, I'm using my data, but whatever, no big deal. One of my favorites is strict drug policy or nah. <laughs> I can imagine somebody just kind of walking into the office, like kicking their feet up on the desk, and be like, "All right, look here. Is there a strict drug policy or nah?" That's funny. I don't pay child support. That's I don't know if you'd say that at a job interview. I don't work on holidays. Yep, I would throw somebody out for that. Anyway, they drop the charges. That just sounds like the end of a really good story. I don't know if you know that's something that you'd really bring up in a job interview. Now, another thing that I found was hashtag three words to live by. I noticed that these kind of popped up after Finding Dory came back out because a lot of it was just keep swimming. Um, one that I really thought was funny was don't underestimate Ewoks. Why not? Ewoks never really do anything. All lives matter. Yeah, we all remember that one. Life goes on. Tupac, love you. Never say never. Biebs, still love you. Bill Gates says, think things through. I I like that one. And my grandma used to say, shut your mouth, because I used to talk all the time. Not that I do today, of course. Uh, I like that one too. I thought that that one used to be really funny. One thing I've noticed too is I'm seeing a lot of, you know, big names here. Lady Gaga posted one. Nas posted Puff Puff Pass. Uh, I said Bill Gates. And, uh, you know, I'm seeing some bigger people. Gucci Mane. Uh, Waka Flocka, and somebody named Goat, which is greatest of all time. So he's, you know, whatever it is that he's great at, he's the greatest of all time at it. And he's posting, so cool. Speaking of greatest of all time, it's coming time for us to wrap this up. I know it's been a lot of fun, um, but you'll live. And then Pauline will be back, which will be fun because I miss her, let's be honest. But don't tell her that because we're not really friends in her mind. Um, Now, one funny thing that I thought was, just as we did, the five words to never say during a job interview, 
somebody is doing a job interview, and I thought that that was hilarious, and I just wanted to bring that up because I know that it can be nerve wracking. I was nervous, and when I did my job interview, I actually came into the studio that day and was listening to Keith and Jordan, and these guys were hilarious, and I was like, ah, that sucks. I wanted to be the only funny one, but you know what? It turned out to be a lot of fun. So if you do a job interview, just be calm, hang out. You know, things usually turn out pretty okay as long as you're not like addicted to crystal meth because that can kind of ruin a lot of things for a lot of people. Unless you like to party, in which case it's totally fine. Anyway, we will talk to you guys next time. Thanks for listening. This is Mariano. You know, next time we'll be back to full strength with hashtag Pollyano. So thanks for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye.